So, what does a paddle and breast cancer have in common? Well, prior to 1996, pretty much nothing. But since then, the combination has become the worldwide phenomenon of breast cancer survivor dragon boating. Dragon boating is the worldwide sport born centuries ago in China. The 50-foot dragon boat has about 22 paddlers all working in tandem with their paddles. Have you ever stopped to wonder though, where did the breast cancer dragon boat movement start? How did it start? Why did it start? And who started it? I'm cancer physical therapy specialist, Dr. Leslie Walke. And in the recovery room today, I'm not only going to tell you, I am going to take you to the exact place it launched almost 25 years ago and introduce you to the woman behind the start of the movement. These are the waters of False Creek in Alder Bay in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. And this is where the myth that exercise and repetitive or strenuous activity causes lymphedema was bravely put to the test of scientific study with the founding of the world's first dragon boat team, Abreast in a Boat, which was comprised entirely of women living with breast cancer. Breast cancer dragon boating was born on this very platform by this very incredible woman. I am really excited to introduce you to my dear friend, Dr. Susan Harris. Hey, Susan. Hey, Leslie. <laughs> so Susan was on the original dragon boating team that looked at and challenged the myth of repetitive activity causes lymphedema. And that now dragon boating has spread across the globe and she's very proud to have been part of that. So Susan, tell us why, what was the impetus for starting a breast in a boat? Give us the background, the history and all the excitement. Okay. It's so cool. Well, um, when I had breast cancer, I went to see a physical, physical therapist for the first time in my life, even though I am one. <laughs> and uh, she chastised me for having raked leaves with my family on a beautiful autumn day measured my arm, which she'd never measured before, and said, oh, you're up two centimeters, you've got lymphedema. And I thought, well, how does she know that when she didn't measure me before and my arm didn't look or feel any different? And I thought, but she was preaching the conventional wisdom at the time that you shouldn't do raking as a repetitive upper body activity, you shouldn't do that. So I started to question that. I certainly didn't want to get lymphedema, um, but I started to wonder about that and then uh, physician at the University of British Columbia and an exercise physiologist, Dr. Don McKenzie, decided to actually challenge that myth with probably the worst possible sport one could do as far as repetitive upper extremity activities, which was the sport of yeah, doing, dragon boat nice. racing, which okay. is not like paddling a canoe, but it's a staccato, fast, brisk, deep paddle. And uh, if anything could cause lymphedema, that would be it. So you guys said, let's go big or go home. So if you want to crush the myth, you went to the, the most aggressive, repetitive activity yeah, you yeah, could find yeah. in dragon boating. So that's how that started. And, and they were cautious. Our coaches were Don, who was a physician, um, Diana Jesperson, who's a nurse, and Sherry Neeson for Tumman, who's a physical therapist. And they wanted to make sure that we got in shape first. So we spent two months working out in the gym, pumping iron twice a week. Um, we were supposed to do aerobic activities three times a week um, for at least 30 minutes at a time. So they, they weren't just going to throw us in the boats without right, getting right. ready first. Yeah. So so they <clears throat> they strengthened you, then they trained you how to pro properly do the technique and be safe, and then they trained you in the boat, and then they raced you. And how many people in that? There were 22 people in the boat. 24. 24. Oh, yeah. You got the drummer in the back. Yeah, you got yeah. the, 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 the steer person. person. How many of those people that were paddling got lymphedema, Susan? A zero. All right. Did you no. hear that? A zero. <laughs> so that paper was published and it started a ripple effect literally across Vancouver, across Canada, across the United States, and literally across the globe. So there are now dragon boat teams in how many countries? Oh, um, 25 different countries around the world. I think at least, if not more, there's, there are a couple hundred dragon boat, breast wow. cancer dragon boat teams. Yeah, I certainly there, know that there are some in my community and my patients are, are dragon boat. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so just goes to show you how how sometimes you have to go out of your way to break myths and break stereotypes um, but do it safely do it smart and do it with a researcher the data is that if you 
can get your arm fully flexible, it's fully strong, and anytime you do something new with your arm that you gradually increase what you're doing, you put your arm at no increased risk of lymphedema. Actually, if you're healthy and strong and fit and of normal body weight, your risk actually of getting lymphedema goes down. So, thanks Susan, always good to see you. So, Dr. Susan Harris, one of the original Dragon Boat Racers. I'm Dr. Leslie Walkie, signing out from the recovery room from the beautiful shores of False Creek in Vancouver. We'll talk again soon. Beautiful British Columbia.